So if you want to do a video, you should do it at any, any time other than 2 a.m. in the morning. Why am I doing it at 2 a.m.? Well, I have to be up right now because I'm doing a Jerusalem call. And so normal time for them is, uh, well, whatever it is, it's like 9 in the morning, 10 in the morning, or something, but it's 2 for me. So I, I just I haven't been talking to you lately, but I'm going to be talking a lot more because we're going to be leading some very important prayer calls and such with the coming election. And those of you that are waking up uh, in the morning, good morning and good afternoon. Good to see you. And, uh, you know, the, I just, have you seen and do you know what, what exactly is happening? Of course, in the country, they, this is not a, an election that's happening. This is a more like a historic event. This is a defining moment. And I, I could not understand for the life of me until uh, recently what it was that hit. It was a wave of witchcraft that hit. It was, of course, the COVID uh, situation. We've, we're finding out now that the news media is shutting down. And I, I've even got people that are in you know, Asia that are, like, I think are under mind control. They, they don't even know, they, they're not even aware of what's going on in their own country. But the, the, it looks as though the virus, without a doubt, came out of the weapons lab in Wuhan. Whether it was released on purpose, it could, it could have been released on purpose because the Chinese have a 200 tons shortfall of wheat uh, grain predicted, which meant that they could have calculated that, you know, they could have lost a million people or 800,000 people and out of a billion, could have probably worked for them. And so long as they could spread a virus that could get to the United States and shut down the economy in time to disrupt the election for Trump. I mean, don't, don't think for a moment that demonic... People don't think that way. And the, the Chinese are beautiful people. The Chinese Communist Party is not. And uh, so when I discovered that Bill Gates and the World Health Organization actually has scenarios that they've been working on, they had the whole scenario coming out of, I think it was the Sudan or Brazil, uh, but they, they picked another nation. But basically, they know how long it takes for a nation to go through a shutdown. Of course, China well, had shut off Beijing traffic uh, immediately from Wuhan, but they had uh, flights going. Um, they knew they would have like 100,000 people that would be going into the United States uh, with the virus. So it's very conceivable. Could have been done on purpose. And if it wasn't done on purpose, it was done um, on purpose to experiment with a viral, you know, disease and a weapons lab. Who the heck does that kind of stuff? Um, I'm sure we got morons that do that stuff too, but doesn't leak out of the refrigerator. So the, the point is that that is a principality over China saying it's time for the United States to come down. There you've got the dragon coming up. Then you have the eagle over here and America, of course, is, is in a crisis of its own because we've got the equivalent of Al Qaeda terrorists, um, uh, Democrats trying to storm the cockpit because they want to take over the, and we already have $28 trillion in debt. What we really need now is a, is a fantasy environmental program that uh, is going to basically destroy the economy because there again, you've got lunatics trying to fly a plane. It wouldn't be so bad if we had an election, but it's like we can't have an election, can we? Because the Democrats have shut down all the states that they can, shut down the economy, and uh, they're, 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 they're pumping up this fictitious world of, of, um, of COVID everywhere. And when I say fictitious, I mean that uh, you can you can open up for business. You don't have to dis you don't have to destroy the economy because there, there's a price to pay also when you go into a Great Depression. So anyway, the uh, we have a situation here where I'm assessing the situation, saying what happened. But I'll tell you when the witchcraft is a wave upon wave. It was the George Floyd moment, and as tragic as that moment was, you know what's worse than having a tragedy? It's having an exploited tragedy. It's like having um, somebody who is, uh, had a heart attack and you use that moment in order to you know, move strategic paperwork through the company so that you can rip off the company because someone, you know, the owner had a heart attack. So you have a tragedy like that. And poised was Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter was never a racial reconciliation fight for the black life people. Uh, black Lives Matter, I knew about it when Jordan Peterson faced all of the, the uh, riotous activity up in 
uh, in, uh, in, in Canada because they were the ones that were going to the universities and forced them to put diversity gender curriculum in that caused Peterson to say, no, I'm not going to say, um, you're not going to put words in my mouth to call someone a man if, if, if it's a woman and you can't force me to say something. And so as a therapist, he said, I'll say it if I feel like it's appropriate, but I'm a therapist, I'll do that, but you can't make me as propaganda. And so they were the mischievous people that did it. So you know, there, there's five policemen associated with a, with a BLM killing uh, issue down here in Dallas. So I'm, I was aware of them before the George Floyd incident. But I didn't know that they were rooted in African witchcraft. I didn't realize they practiced a form of, um, of witchcraft that summons the spirits of the dead as part of the ritual. So when they're repeating names, remember my name, remember my name, and they repeat the names, repeat the names. They're not repeating names so you can remember the, you know, the roll call. They're repeating names so that they can release the spirits from the imprisonment of, um, of the dark regions. So they're literally releasing spirits. They, they did this with um, the, uh, the Los Angeles mayor outside of, his, outside of his house. They did a whole ritual, which is the reason why he is constantly befuddled. And so I, then I thought, oh, this makes sense, the trauma of COVID, and then, then the, the trauma of, of, of the George Floyd incident. But then you have the witchcraft, now the protests, the riots, the rage, the anger, the irrational, demonized frenzy, it all makes sense. It's rooted in this occult fountain that's been opened up. And you look at that with 95% uh, of the media coverage is, you know, anti so If people could probably, if they knew what the president was doing, if they knew who he was, if they knew what was happening, they could... They got a they got a great pilot that can fly this plane through the storm. However, uh, what I'm what I'm realizing now is the Democrats have no intention of losing, even if they lose, because they want these ballots. These ballots are going to come flooded. I mean, it's an incredible hundred million of these ballots are going to come in. Trump is likely to win a landslide and have it taken from him because of all these ballots and and they're they're you know people that are preparing for unrest. And I'm not trying to traumatize, which is probably why what I'm doing. But I'm saying that that. In addition to that, I'm, I listened to a Tim Keller. I read a Tim Keller post. I'm going to deal with this tomorrow. I got Tim Keller's books behind me. Brilliant guy, brilliant guy, and totally useless in, in a spiritual firefight uh, because he's in New York. And what I'm realizing is everybody succumbs to the principality uh, that is in the region. And so, if you're a New Yorker, it's very hard. It's really, really hard. It's kind of like being, you know, it's it's like kind of liking Jews in Nazi Germany. If you want to like Trump in New York. And it's, it's a liberal, destructive stronghold there. And Tim Keller has to live with his church. He's got to live with his peers. He's got to live with his family and friends. And he's got a hard time trying to be enthusiastic for Trump. Trump is the best friend Christians and Jews ever had, bar none. My God, the guy's negotiating a deal right now to, to, to guard the flanks of uh, Israel. And he's going to probably be bringing in Saudi Arabia along with this thing. And it's one of the most remarkable. He goes to the UN and lectures the nations because he said he didn't know that 80% of the Popul uh, of the of the world is is not safe for for uh, for Christians for religious minorities that there's persecution because the window of India and China that that 1040 window where the population is so dense happens to be you know from from China to Hindu India it happens and, and you know Muslim uh, Indonesia and it's just it's a place where you know Christians are are persecuted and Jews hardly exist so Trump goes and lectures them at the UN and says we got to change this thing. You would think a Tim Keller, you would think these pastors would say, well, actually, this guy's, you know, he gets a lot of bad press. Now, a lot of the press is really distorted about him. Uh, you know, he's, he's not, you know, you, I'm not telling you who to vote for, vote your conscience, but but what does he do? He writes this article, I'll deal with it tomorrow because I want to, I want to, he's, he's too great a man to, to deal with capriciously. Um, but he absolutely is just a disappointment when it comes to going, well, I'll tell you, I don't know. Christians don't have a certain... I can't say vote this or that when it comes to abortion or can't say vote this or that when it comes to immigration. The Bible doesn't have a clear answer on these things. Yes, it does. But you don't want one because it's inconvenient in, in Manhattan for you to be a Trump supporter. I get it. It's a big price you pay. Oh, but I hate to see people use their towering intellect to come up with arguments that allow them to, um, to waffle. I'm sure he doesn't think he's waffling. That's the worst part. So, uh, but that's a whole lot of pastors right now. They, they don't have enough sense to know what's going on. Anyway, so 40 days out. We're uh, coming up to, uh, like you know, I guess, the 20-something around there, 20, in next week. Franklin Graham is going to be doing a prayer walk up there in, in D.C. Uh, Jonathan Kahn's doing something with a whole bunch of people. 
um, and it's 40 days out from the election, but it actually is the Day of Atonement. That's what I want to talk to you about. I have hope, after giving you all that dystopian information, I have hope, I have hope that what this president has done as uh, taking out Soleimani, the mastermind of the killing of 600 Americans and the mastermind of the Hamas and Hezbollah triangulation against Israel through terrorist cells, uh, one of the most intelligent and gifted and dangerous people in the Middle East, Trump took him out when he made the mistake of going after the United States because Trump, Cyrus Trump will not be um, you know, uh, taken down by those spirits outside the country. Now, what happens inside the country, that's a different jurisdiction. The policing of that spiritual realm is supposed to be the church. And as you know, the church has been like, blah, 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 with, with you know, the exception of like a few, a Franklin Graham and uh, a Baptist pastor down here in Dallas, I mean, and Paula White, you can name who they are. That's how embarrassing the uh, show up, the, you know, the turnout has been for our courageous Christian leadership boys. We got a couple, but let's face it, uh, you know as well as I do, the vast rank and file, they're like Republicans. Pastors are like Republicans. They try to eschew conflict and they basically are playing defense. They're not on offense. So, um, so we have uh, the strategy for prayer. Oh, I got to do my call with Jerusalem. I'm late. The strategy for prayer is 40 days out. I believe... This is, sounds strange, but I've been asking the Lord. I believe those that bless Israel, God will bless, and those that curse Israel, God will lightly esteem. My belief is that the Lord, that Trump has sowed so much in the spirit for the church, for Christians. Got that Pastor Brunson out of Turkey there. Obama left him there. You know, John Kerry could get him out. Trump, boom, a couple phone calls. Tariff on steel. There he goes. He's back home. So, uh, I believe that there's something about Trump that 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 uh, we need to pray that the Lord will weigh in the balance that the friends of God, the friends of Israel, and the friends of his people, that there would be mercy, uh, that mercy would triumph over judgment, and that God would so take us through this next chapter that we can recover ourselves, our sanity, and our sense. And uh, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have faith that the, the, uh, that the left is not going to give up the election. I think there's going to be all kinds of potential violence. I think there's going to be uh, hell raised. I don't think the election is going to be sold at all in the evening of uh, the 21st, unless, or in the evening of the election, because unless God intervenes, and this is the day of atonement, this is the prayer, 40 days before this election, we'll be meeting and praying, we'll be crying out to God. I'm encouraging you to be fasting too. I believe that the that scales can be tipped possibly because, ironically, because of Israel. And the president gave a golden key to Netanyahu yesterday that he has a golden key to the White House of access and brokered the peace. And I just think that we, we, we need to call upon the Lord that he will have mercy upon this. The age of the Gentiles, basically ended in 1967 when the Jews fulfilled the prophecy of Jesus that they recovered uh, control of Jerusalem. And then the age of the Gentiles went one more step further to a closure as they have Jerusalem as their undisputed capital for the moment until President Kamala Harris attempts to reverse it should the devil not be vetoed by our prayers. Um, but we are going to pursue this thing. And we're going to push this thing. And I believe that the I believe that what's going to happen is Trump's going to win and Biden's going to not step down. They're going to have an electoral college brouhaha. There's going to be all kinds of intimidation. That's going to be that Pastor Covington thing. Remember that Pastor Covington prophecy? Now, I said at that time, I said that that wasn't a prophecy um, of, of what was going to happen. That was a prophecy of what the outcome would be if things didn't change. But... You see how that happens? Because all those riots and things are because there's no election resolution, and this is designed to intimidate the Supreme Court because eventually it's going to go to the state courts. The states are going to, whether Democrats are going to be in charge of the court, and the state attorney, the state um, the secretary of states are going to certify the result, even if they're even if they're crooked, because that's the way they do it. And it's going to go to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court's going to come to Justice Roberts, and Justice Roberts hasn't shown himself to be a very strong individual. So we're going to have to pray for him because it's going to be like one vote. And uh, wow, uh, that, that's one real scenario, folks. That's one real scenario. If you haven't heard it, you need to know it. But going into that day of atonement, coming into that 40-day countdown, praying for the mercy of God and making the argument that God's mercy, but for the position Americans had with Israel, that the Lord would remember that and that, and that in, in judgment, he would show mercy and that he would so shake us that we could be, 
that we could find ourselves mended in some way, that we can come through this, and that there would be a, a uh, there would have to, of course, be an awakening. Christians are always thinking, awakening, awakening, awakening. Yeah. But the awakening to do what? The awakening, the awakening that doesn't. When you've got media and academia that's pumping out the kinds of um, influence that it has, um, having, having a populist movement for evangelism and revival isn't going to save the nation because you still, to save the nation, you need to have a move of God that actually moves from revival to reformation. Remember that. You have to move to the gates of influence. It's not enough to have a revival in the, in the cabin or in the, uh, you know, in the um, you know, in coach section. you got to get control of the plane. You don't want to have Allah Akbar you know, controlling the steering wheel while you're having a revival in the back seat. You got to get the revival all the way to the steering wheel. So let's go take a look at this. Just want you to see this, just to show you that I'm not delirious, even though it is two in the morning, and I got to call Jerusalem. It Tucker. Very clear. They plan to put Joe Biden in the white. Well, I can hear this. He wins the election. Hear that? Joe's going in whether he wins or not. Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstances because Yay! I think this is going to drag out, and eventually, I do believe he will win if. We don't give an inch, and if we are as you hear this? focused and relentless in other words, as the other side is. Don't let them win, even if they win. They're angry rich lady. Boy, there are a lot of those around. Well, today, Jeff Bezos' personal newspaper, The Washington Post, reported that violence is likely if Joe Biden doesn't win. But, of course, not predicted if he does win, which tells you everything. And according to the Boston Globe, Biden's surrogate, John Podesta, has been planning for the possibility that Biden won't concede and that the military will get involved and make sure he's president. It's hard to believe anyone would say that out loud, but people are saying that out they loud. They are saying it. So what is going to happen in November? Well, Vince Colonnais has gamed it out. He's a radio show host at WMAL in Washington and an editor at The Daily Caller. We're happy to have him on tonight. Vince, thanks so much for coming on. So you, what do you think, what are the scenarios? What's likely to happen when election day? Well... As you know, politics is typically very hard to predict. This one is not hard to predict at all. This election day is setting up to be a dumpster fire, and yep. an unquenchable one, actually. You know, a lot of people think back to the chaos of the 2000 election, pregnant chads, hanging chads, looking at ballots in Florida, uh, thinking, boy, I hope that never happens again. I'm sorry, that is a maskless walk in the park compared to what we're about to experience. And what I mean by that is... This year, experts predict that upwards of 156 million Americans will cast a ballot. Share in the this, people. Election. Share the broadcast. And Share this. This is when you got to get out. Of those will be cast by mail. This is unprecedented. We are overing, overhauling our election system this year uh, in a way that is really meaningful in one of the most fraught political environments that anyone has seen who's alive today. So, in order to do that, does the mail system work? Well, there are a lot of question marks about that, especially because we've had so many primaries this year already. And look at what happened in Nevada, in Pennsylvania, in New York, where 84,000 ballots were just dis were disappeared. That was one out of every four voters not counted for. They were rejected in New York. How could you have a system where a single battleground state is in question because of a lapse like that? That is going to be a disaster. Oh, yeah. My sense is that Democrats plan to win this election in the weeks after election day yeah, people? with lawyers. So if it's a contest between the parties... 800 the lawyers, lawyers, they've got the 8 to 1 compared to Republicans. The party of lawyers. Do you get yeah, the feeling they that's their... That's their lawyers. Purpose? Yes, they have an army of lawyers and a, an, un, again, unquenchable desire to win. You heard it vocalized there by one of the most famous Democrats, Hillary Clinton... Uh, saying that under no circumstance should Joe Biden concede this election. John Podesta, as you mentioned, was her campaign chairman. The war game that they gamed out in June wow. was essentially this, that come the election, he would refuse to concede playing Joe Biden and that he would challenge the results of the Electoral College. He would manipulate the actual electors to the Electoral College. Right. And in their war game scenario, three states, Washington, Oregon, uh, and see, and sorry, uh, 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 California, all three and of the states on the western seaboard threatened to secede what? from the union. And they're and all this, on this fire. What's going on out this, there? Is, this is the they got enough problems the out there? They're going to do that? Podesta. That is a big deal. And they say they want to wait for the military at that point to figure out who's president of oh, the United that girl, States. That Kamala. was, by the way, a scenario where Joe Biden loses the election. It's a gigantic deal. So I think there really is only one solution to all of this. And it's we've got to get the polls open. We have very little time. 
but it is of immense importance that people vote in person. If Americans can't have confidence in their election system, the whole thing falls apart. We have such low trust in our institutions today at all that's, levels. That's true. Media everywhere. It has to be polls and de the, the devils. The Democrats aren't going to let that happen. Congress They're going to use, use COVID as an excuse. Capabilities, threaten funding. Force these states to reopen. Whatever you have to do, enfranchise every American voter you possibly can. Because right now, the state's governors are shutting down polls across the country, and it is safe to vote. Doctors Fauci and Dr. Burks, they say it's safe to get. Democrats are shutting the polls down. They want the corrupt ballots. That mail -in ballot. But we need a lot of confidence in this election result, and we need it quickly. I think that's a very, very smart point, and it's something that Republicans in Congress. Not one of the sharpest groups in America need to be reminded of. So thank you for reminding them of that. Oh, okay. Lord. Oh. You know, I'm telling you the truth, people. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus to have mercy upon America. Lord, I ask for an extension of grace. We do not deserve this, but we are asking on the basis of Jesus Christ that, this, uh, that the, the world order will not lurch backwards and off, but that you will give us an extension of grace, not just for us, but for, for the other nations, the sheep nations, that are just waking up and realizing that they have to occupy the gates. They have to, they have to be vigilant for the, sake of, for the sake of the harvest, for the sake of our children. We pray for the extension of grace, Lord mercy we know not how we don't prescribe and tell you how to do it but lord we ask that you would intervene in such a way that you will uh, that you will shift the direction that we're in right now i pray for the awakening of this american church i believe lord there's an awakening i believe there's a fear i believe there's a concern i believe there's an alarm but there's there's no wineskin there's no order there's no organization to this effort there's this, that we need your help, Lord. We need you to become the Lord of battles now. We need you to release the battalions in the direction. And all that we can do is pray that, uh, that the violence will be arrested and that this curse of witchcraft will be uprooted, that the witchcraft will be broken, and that the mind control and spin and anger, manipulation, seduction, that, Lord, that there will be an arresting of that by the rising up of the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Elijah, the Spirit of truth. I pray that Jezebel will be bound and will not be able to come forth. That, that the enemy will, uh, will not be able to change the times and the seasons that you have determined for mercy and grace in this country. Your grace and mercy is ferocious. I don't believe it's a one-term grace. I believe you meant it to be longer. Lord, if if it's to be that this nation should experience the uh, the discipline of the Lord, then I pray it will not be on the watch of this man, uh, this Cyrus, who you raised up and anointed. Let it let him not be Lord God. Uh, the uh, the casualty in this combat, but let your grace envelop him that he can finish his course until we come through this crisis. Lord, Lincoln made it all the way through to the conclusion of the great crucible of the Civil War. We're in the midst of one, and I pray that you will guard this Lincoln's life, that you'll have mercy on America, and that you will give us an extension of time and extension of grace for the Great Awakening, a greater awakening than religious, a civic awakening, an awakening that will repossess the gates and, and, uh, and, and, and will guard the, the essence of what this Constitution and what this free enterprise and what this religious freedom dream was that is being uh, that is being taken hostage by hands that do not understand it. I'm asking God for mercy and the extension of grace. Your mercy is ferocious. Your name, Lord, honor your name. What would the heathen say? And a man who stood so with Israel and a man who stood so for Christians is uh, is able to be railroaded out by by the manipulation and force and self-will of those who are his enemies lord you frustrated them at every turn so far you frustrated them at every turn i pray you frustrate them yet one more time in jesus name 
we can have an extension of grace. Hallelujah. Well, there's your 20 minutes after two in the morning prayer. Unrehearsed. But there's the essence of the argument we make at the throne of grace. Share this with your friends. I'm not ashamed to pray. I'm not ashamed to own my opinion. And we're going to have to really uh, press in and keep your joy. Keep your joy. Keep your joy. These things are very heavy subjects, aren't they? But uh, have you watched The Chosen yet? Man, if you haven't seen The Chosen, you got to go see The Chosen. Vid Angel, watch The Chosen. I'm going to do an interview with the director. I just discovered it. It's been, for me, it's been like an, an elixir, a, a tonic for my soul. Just that person that's playing Jesus, the Holy Spirit possesses him at certain times, and he just... He just reveals something of the disposition of Jesus that challenges and convicts and touches my heart. And it, it gives me a buoyancy. And I realize, hallelujah, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Share this. Share, share, share. Give me some hearts. Give me some love. Um, how does this work over here? Can I, uh, can I put my finger there? Does it, where does it go? Does it go? Does it go here? Oh, love, the hearts are coming in. Oh, well, they stop. There we go. Whoa, that's fantastic. All right, so it's supposed to be on the other side. I don't know. Maybe I should put two fingers down. I can put my two fingers down. I can cover both ends at the same time. Through the goalpost. Put it through the goalpost. There we go. Through the goalpost. Woo, bang. <laughs> hey, I had a birthday September 4th. Thank you for asking. I'm kind of, you know, low key on these birthday things. Annabelle's a big party person. But uh, so we had a birthday, yep, September 4th. And uh, and uh, it makes me a potentially old man. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, I'm going to go to Israel. I've got to call them. Thanks for being with me, people. Share this, share this, share it, share it, share it, share it. Please, because we've got to get this message out. Talk to you soon. Hey, if you like this video today, you can help me out by leaving some comments and you know, you could vote up this video. Just give me a like sign and uh, click on like so that I know if this is working for you. And also share it with your friends because our entire movement is based upon people sharing ideas with other people. And if you want to be regularly notified about these broadcasts, then you want to subscribe so that you'll be able to get the latest material as soon as it comes out.